Very excited, very excited to start this new chapter in my life and new chapter in my career. Um, actually, Kevin came to me about a month or so ago and asked me if I would ever consider, you know, working on the NBA side, working with his staff, and it really wasn't something that I consciously thought of. And once he planted the seed, I, I, saw, I thought about it and I thought, you know what, this is a great next step for me. It was, it's a good time to sort of turn the keys over to someone else for the fever take all the experience that I've learned and you know all the things that I've been able to build on, on with one team in one league and, and bring it over to the Pacers. Do you feel like it's a great part in history and society where you're just judged by your basketball IQ, your basketball knowledge, maybe a trailblazer, but that's not the way you're necessarily looking at it. I don't. In fact, Kevin and I were talking about that. I said, um, you know, for me, it, it's the whole point of, of being in this game is I love it so much. I love being a part of the process. I love building teams. I love winning, you know, competing. And to have the opportunity to do that with a franchise that I already know. I mean, I was very familiar with everybody. I spent a lot of years walking down the hall asking Donnie Walsh for advice on certain things I was looking at or asking Larry for advice. So, um, you know, we know each other, and I think we know how each other thinks. And so it's, it was just a great opportunity to transition over. 19 years is a long time. What's kind of one, can you take away one thing from this fever experience, though, that translates to this new position now? Well, I think. First and foremost, just putting together people. You know, for me, when you're building teams and you're building an operation like what I've been able to do, it's really about people and finding the right fit. Um, obviously, talent always helps, but I, you know, I think one thing that we agree on is that you know when you build teams and you build you know infrastructure and you build systems and processes, it's about people, and that's what I've learned the most is how to do that what goes into that and you know that's when you have success. Is it too simple to say it's just basketball? It's still just basketball? It's it's basketball. <laughs> it really is because we, we, we share a lot of stories and I, I think Chad Buchanan and I were talking last week and we were swapping stories about something and he goes oh my gosh you guys are doing the exact same thing we are and I said yeah we you know we have this on the WNBA side I mean I, if it weren't for that league I wouldn't have the experience that I have. You know, all the same, all the same processes of how you put your team together, the same heartaches, the same, you know, salary restraints, you know, con contracts, talking to agents, talking to fans, building your team. I mean, it's 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 all the same. There's just a lot more zeros on the NBA side. So and I know you don't want to toot your own horn, but do you get the sense that you are an inspiration for young girls out there that say, hey, I, I like the NBA too, and I want to go this, I want to go this path, and you're saying, go out there and do it. It's, it's wide open, it really is. And, and I'm just grateful that I work for an organization that sees that, you know, they don't see gender because I think the ball knows no gender. You know, it's, it's really about the game and the opportunity. And um, I've been fortunate because of the league that I worked in and working for an organization that has been a first. Um, you know, our owners, as you know, are very progressive minded. They're entrepreneurs in, in general. So um, I think the opportunity for young women to continue to look at you know, reaching beyond just their single sport um, is, is enormous. Do you foresee the future in the near future, more women getting a chance to be part of the on-court bench staffs of teams around the league? I think we're now at that point, you know. So think about it. The NBA is 72 years old. The WNBA is 22 years old. So we now have this first, I'm first generation management, right? So I'm part of a, of a league where, you know, I've had to learn and I, and I work in an organization that had an NBA team. So I, I've had this chance to grow up on my own, so to speak, and, and, you know, run my own team. So I think there's other women who are in the WNBA, whether it's players, coaches, we're seeing it now. There's so many smart basketball people that aren't necessarily just men, you know? So the fact that, that this organization wants to win and I want to win, and it's like, let's put the best basketball minds we can together is a tribute to this group. On the broadcasting side of things too, you're seeing women get more chances to do the play-by-play -play or color commentary for the men's game, and like you said, the basketball knows no gender. It's true, and you know, that's, that's one of the things we're slowly seeing. So, you know, if, if the WNBA has been around 22 years, you've got, you know, it takes a generation, 25 years. So we now have, you know, I remember drafting players who were saying, you know, I watched you guys play when I was five years old, and now they're playing in the, in the league, or now they're coaching, or now they're going on and moving into other areas. I mean, I've had, you know, young men who have worked for our staff that have grown up watching the WNBA. So, and it really wasn't about gender. It was like, we just wanted the best basketball people we could, could find. Kelly, talk to us about what the WNBA means to a lot of these little girls now, because so many of them, have, my, my daughter's 15, 
and she's never seen basketball without women. And we have when we were older. So talk to us about what that opportunity has done for basketball and for yourself in, in being in this situation today. Yeah, I'm standing here because of the WNBA. You know, I, I a lot of my colleagues, a lot of the players, Tamika Catchings, you know, to, to name a few, um, Sue Bird, who's over in Denver. I mean, there's a lot of players who are now coming of age and who have a lot to give to the game. And so to me, when you talk about your daughter, that's that next generation. You know, there's more dads out there with daughters who are gonna want their daughters to have the same opportunities, you know, as their sons. And why not? Because if you're a good basketball person or you're a good leader, or you have the skill set to do the job, uh, you know, it's always been open and available to everyone. So I think this is a great opportunity for young girls to, to aspire to be in management, to aspire to coach or to aspire to play. It doesn't matter. Kelly, I'm sure you've got a lot of messages from a lot of people this morning. What stood out to you? Um, I would say in general, just a heartfelt, you know, congratulations and um, a lot from some of my colleagues, men and women who are talking about sort of paving the way. But, you know, I think there's um, just just real support and, and, and just support and sort of you know, joy around the opportunity.